Pastor. Praise the Lord. Receivers of miracles, I said, praise the Lord. Tonight, showers of miracle. Showers of healing. Showers of salvation. Again, tonight, we come to the God of all possibilities. And in your life tonight, everything possible in my life. What are you? In my life. Heaven confirm that in your life in Jesus' name. Father, we well, thank you for your love. Thank you for your compassion. Thank you for your mercy. And there's no discrimination with you. Everyone, everyone here, everyone there, everyone, everywhere will have the touch of your power tonight in Jesus' name. Unprecedented miracles. Miracles that we have never seen. Here, there, everywhere. Confirm in every life tonight in Jesus' name. The rain will begin to fall on everyone. And your joy will never stop in our lives. Give testimony to everyone. Who will be the next? Father, confirm it as they have said, as they have believed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name we pray. It is done. I said it is done. Tell the person by your side as you are sitting down, for me, for you, it is done. Amen. Tonight we are coming to the word of God again. We are looking at Job chapter 5. Job chapter 5. Reading from verse 9. Which doeth great things. It's talking about God. It's talking about your God. Your father in heaven. It's talking about the lover of your soul. Which doeth. Doeth. He keeps on doing. Which doeth great things. And unsearchable, marvelous things without number, numberless. He does marvelous things, majestic things, miracle, miracles, miraculous things. And he does them without number. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, who giveth rain upon the earth and sendeth waters upon the fields in verse 11 it says to search up on high those that below are you there if you are low downgraded deep in the valley tonight is the night the lord will lift you up that those which mourn the people who cry, the people who are sorrowful, the people who mourn, that they may be exalted to safety. There's a lot coming your way today. Look at chapter 9, Job chapter 9, and I'm reading from verse 10. It says, which doeth great things past finding out. Great things, great miracles, Great transformation, great salvation, and great sanctification that brings holiness of heart, holiness everywhere, every time, wherever we find ourselves. He does great things, great things of power. He doeth great things past finding out yea and wonders without number he tells us again he says he does wonders wonders in the heart wonders in your soul wonders in your spirit wonders in your family and wonders in your community and wonders here for you tonight and without number look at that when it says without number your own miracle is part of that. 
Yours is part of that. Yours is part of that. And we're counting and counting and counting. And then we lose counting. We'll say it's without number. Everyone has a miracle with his name attached to it. And yours will not miss you tonight. Numberless possibilities, numberless miracles, numberless exploits. How do they happen? In what way? What avenue? What pathway will they take to get to us? John chapter 14, reading from verse 12. In John chapter 14, verse 12, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, he, anywhere, everywhere, he that believeth on me here, over the radio, on the television, online, anywhere you are, all it takes is to say, I believe it will be done. Amen. Amen. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Look at verse 13, in verse 13, and whatsoever miracle and whatsoever salvation and whatsoever sanctification holiness and whatsoever power from on high and whatsoever deliverance whatsoever wonders of wonders whatsoever ye shall ask in my name that will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And then in verse 14, it says, If ye shall ask anything, what are you asking for tonight? That thing will be done. Yeah. You bring your heart, your request before the Lord, and you say, I'm here for something today. That something tonight will be done. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Who will do it? He will do it himself. What you don't have any power to do. What you don't have any strength to carry what you don't have any skill to perform he said if you will only ask everybody can ask you can ask i can ask and if you can only ask the father in heaven the lord jesus christ our redeemer he says i will do it i rejoice with you tonight your prayers are going to be answered. I rejoice with you tonight. Every mountain of your life will be moved out of that place tonight in Jesus' name. I'm talking to you tonight on the numberless possibilities, numberless, without number, innumerable, the numberless possibilities of the name of of Jesus. Anytime you hear that name, numberless, innumerable, uncountable miracles will begin to happen in your life. And tonight, we come in the authority of that name, in the assurance of that name, in the power of that name. I am sure from heaven will come upon you all the possibilities, everything you're desiring and dreaming of tonight. It has come. There are three things we're looking at. Number one, the possession of transforming salvation in his name. In his name. There's no other name. In that name, we come, we demand, we ask, and salvation will come. I said salvation will come. You know, it's not the, you know, salvation. I have salvation and I say, what is the evidence of the salvation? If the dog is there, the dog will bark 
and I don't have to say where is the dog, but the backing of the dog, I know the dog is there. If a lion is there, it will roar. And I don't have to say, is there a lion there? By the roaring of the lion, I know the lion is there. If salvation is there, there will be transformation there. If there is no transformation there, we are yet to get to that salvation. And tonight you have transforming salvation. Number one, the possession of transforming salvation in his name. Number two, the power of trampling on sicknesses in that name. Every sickness that has been in your body, anywhere, wherever you are now. As you hear that name, the name of Jesus, all the sickness will go from that place, from the head to under your feet. From your eyes, it will go down under your feet. From your tummy, from your neck, from your intestine, that sickness has to move to under your feet and you will trample over that sickness, that infirmity in your life tonight in Jesus' name. The power of trampling on sicknesses in that name. Number three is the promise of total solution. Total solution. In your life, there is no problem unsolved. In your life, there is nothing I'm searching, I'm searching. I cannot find tonight. There is solution, total, complete, entire, salvage solution for everyone in his name. I said in his name. If you can pronounce the name, finish. Can you pronounce the name? I said, can you pronounce the name? For everyone who can pronounce the name, who can mention the name, who can say the name, solution has come for you. My solution has come. My solution has come. What's troubling your heart there? What's disturbing your mind there? What's the unsolvable problem you've been carrying about? What are you crying about tonight? Heaven brings solution to your problem in Jesus' name. Number one, number one, the possession of transforming salvation in his name. Matthew chapter 1, we're looking at verse 21. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, it says, And he shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Say that name. Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Purpose, why he came. He Jesus, and it's the angel that said this. This one is not, you know, the pastor of that denomination, the preacher of that assembly, the overseer, the superintendent of that community said that Jesus will save you. No, 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 no. It's an angel that came from heaven and was talking to Joseph, and it says, She, Mary, shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins now if uh, you know that's the purpose why he came he shall save he shall deliver he shall rescue he shall set free his people from their sins if you had a problem of plumbing in your house and uh, you know the water fills the ground and the dirty water from that dirty place fills the ground and you said the plumber shall come and the plumber came and after the plumber came and the plumber went away 
the water is still there. The ditchy waters are still there. That purpose of the pumbler coming in has not been fulfilled. If seen like a mighty flood, if seen like ditchy erosion has eroded your life and has eroded your spirit, has eroded your mind, if seen has blocked everywhere and every way is wedged with degradation, every way is wedged with disobedience, every way is wet with defiance, every way is wet with demonic diabolical darkness, every way is chill wet, and then the Savior has come, and the Savior has gone, you said the Savior visited me, and all those things are still there, all the sins are still there, you don't have an evidence that the Savior had visited you, the purpose why that plumber came is to make sure that all these things on the ground Everything is mulch and everything goes, and there is not a drop of water, dirty water, remaining after he has come and gone. And he fixes that and fixes that, and he puts his sand in the places that are not visible to the ordinary man, and he screws up everything, and he says, Madam, everything is all right now, Christ. Is greater than the plumber. And when he comes into your life, all the sins that have been oozing out of your heart, of your mouth, of your ears, of your eyes, all the sins that have flooded the ground from your, the action of your feet and the action of your hand. The one that is greater than the plumber, he has come and after he leaves, all those things are gone. All those sins, they are gone. Disobedience, go. I said, disobedience, I command, go. Defiance of the word of God, go. And defilement, defilement that comes into lives because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And Christ the Savior, Christ the Redeemer, he now comes, all that defilement, everything will be cleansed away. And the, the diabolical, devilish deeds, the deeds that are done by the devil through the sinner as Christ now has come, the master has arrived. Jesus the Savior has arrived. And all those diabolical dominion in your life, I couldn't help it. Satan made me do it when Christ visits you. And when Christ comes upon your life, everything that Satan made you to do, all those diabolical things, they are gone in Jesus' name. You know, that man says, I drink, I don't know when to stop. And so I'm drunken, I become a drunkard. Christ visits you tonight. I said, Christ visits you tonight. And when Christ visits you, all the flood of your life, that you are drunken and you are vomiting. You are drunken and you are falling on the ground. You are drunk, you are drinking and you get so drunk, you fall into the gutter. When Christ comes, the Savior, the Redeemer, He takes that bad character, drunkenness, waste of life, waste of money. He'll take it from your life tonight in Jesus. Because she shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Amen. Look at Acts chapter 2, and I'm reading from verse 21. Acts chapter 2, verse 21. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Praise the Lord. If you are there, I said, praise the Lord. It says, it shall come come to pass in your life it will come to pass tonight it will come to pass that whosoever whosoever 
shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That word save is a verb. A verb is a word of action. You know, when it says you are saved, you don't remain where you were before. Because if you remain where you were, there's no salvation. The word is a word of action, a word of movement, a word of motion, a word that takes you out of something and brings you into something better. And tonight, a better life, a better character, a better behavior, a better devotion to the Lord, better emancipation tonight and the Lord will deliver you and you will say once I was blind but now I can see once I was defiant but now I am obedient once I was defiled and defiling but now I am clean that's what it means when you are saved Something happens for the better. A new life. A new behavior. A new character. A new direction in life. And it says it shall come to pass. That whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord. Shall be. Tell me. I rejoice with you. That's why Christ is coming to your life tonight. It will give you transforming salvation in his name. Look at chapter 4, Acts chapter 4. We're reading from verse 12. Acts chapter 4 verse 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. It's not in you by yourself to generate it by self-effort. By turning over a new lead. By making a resolution. The salvation is not in you. It's not in that resolution. It says neither is there salvation in any other. For it's none other name under heaven. Given among men whereby we must be saved. It's Christ coming to your heart. And sitting on the throne of your heart. And then he forgives all the past. It sets you free from the bondage of the life of sinning. And now you are saved. I am saved. <clears throat> Look at Romans chapter 10. Reading from verse 9. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. I will be saved. You know, uh, people say it's in the hand of God whether I get saved or not. Yes, yes. But beyond that, it's destiny. Whether I get saved or not, destiny, all right. It's uh, the choice of God. God determines whether I get saved or not. Is that so? Already God has said he wants to save. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth on the name of that beloved son will not perish. I will not perish. I say it with my own mouth. I will not perish. You will not perish. But have everlasting life. Look at this. If thou, you, shall confess with your mouth. Don't say destiny, destiny, destiny. 
No. If you will confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, the Lordship of Jesus over your heart, over your life, and shall believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou, even tonight, thou in this life, thou from now until you see him face to face, thou shalt be saved. Look at verse 10, in verse 10, for what the heart man believeth, don't push it to God, don't push it to another person, it's you, with your heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Are you there? Your salvation is here tonight. As you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, transforming salvation, not just so so salvation, not just impotent salvation that makes no difference in the character, in the behavior of the man or the woman, thou shalt be saved. You'll have transforming salvation. Look at verse 13. In verse 13, it says, For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, tell me, shall be saved. You have it tonight. Look at number two here. Number two, we're looking at the power for trampling sicknesses in that name. The power that makes you trample over every sickness, every disease, even tonight, that disease will not remain in your body. Yeah. Under your feet. Yeah. Under my feet. Yeah. Under my feet. Yeah. That thing that threatens to kill you. That thing that threatens to take away your life. Uh -uh. When it's under your feet and you trample over that thing and you say, there is where you belong, under my feet, that thing will not trouble you from tonight in Jesus' name. I want you to look at Acts chapter 3, and I'm reading from verse 2. Acts chapter 3, verse 2, and a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried, couldn't walk by himself, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, and to ask arms of them, because the man could not walk, he could not do anything reasonable to earn income. He was lame. He had been paralyzed from his mother's womb. He was asking arms of them that entered into the temple. Then in verse 3 it says in verse 3 who seen Peter and John about to go into the temple asked an arms. And then in verse 4 it says and Peter fastening his eyes upon him with John said look on us don't look away don't look your size don't look back look on us something is about to happen to you that infirmity you are born with something is about to happen that thing will vanish away tonight that disease they say is incurable and they have to carry you and you appeared hopeless and you appeared helpless something great miraculous is about to happen to you tonight look at verse 5 in verse 5 and he gave heed unto them he paid attention to them he said his might his gaze upon them expecting to receive something of them expecting to receive something of them he, he didn't know what they will offer but he wanted he knew he will get something because the man said the apostle said the preacher said look on us and then he looked up he gazed on them expecting Anybody expectant here tonight? What you expect is what you'll get. In fact, you will get more than you expect. The man was expecting arms 
and then uh, the name of Christ give him legs give him hand give him strength he was expecting uh, money but the name of Jesus gave him uh, miracle somebody shout miracle and miracle is greater than money. If Peter had given him money, he'll finish the money and come back to that place, hopeless and helpless and impotent. But uh, he gave him greater than he was asking for. And the Lord will give you greater than what you are asking for. I sight for the blind. Good legs for the lame. And good health for those who are cancerous because the Lord tonight will give you everything you are asking and much more than you are asking look at the man I'm going to read that verse but look at the man he's been healed now and then he gets up he throws away the pan the plate that he was having give me arms give me arms he said I have arms now I have legs now, I have eyes now, I have strength now. And maybe he became a farmer. And then through that farming, he got money. More money than Peter could have given him. Maybe through that, because he's now healed, he got a job. Maybe he got, you know, he was like a carpenter somewhere, somewhere now. Because he has the all his body complete. All your body complete. What is it? What is she there? All your body complete. And now the man could go and work and get the money much more than anybody could have given him. As you get healed tonight, and as you get delivered tonight, everything that made you a wreck, everything that made you, you know, a substandard person just there, who plays, all those things are cleared away. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Look at verse 6. And in verse 6, then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none. Nobody ever spoke like that to him. If they didn't have silver and gold, they just passed on. If they had silver and gold, they gave him, they, they, don't, they don't give everything they've got. They give a little fraction of what they got unto him. And he's temporarily happy, temporarily happy until he has to buy a loaf of bread. And the money is just about enough to buy a loaf of bread. And after that, he's poor again. He possesses, then he becomes poor. He has, then he has not. But what you are having today will keep on bringing blessing upon your life. And so, a Peter says, silver and gold divine on, but such as I have, I give thee in the name. What's the name? Jesus. Tell me the name. Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, and he took him by the right hand. The man did not understand. Rise up and walk. He was more than 40 years of age. He had never walked in his life. And so he couldn't connect that command. Rise up and walk with the movement of his limbs. And so Peter gave him a son. He spoke the word and then he stretched out the hand and lifted him up. Now, those who are having stroke or paralysis or lameness or broken bones or whatever it, that is they, they've not done that for a long time now and then I speak the word here and I send healing unto everyone by the name of Jesus and the lame man and the lame man is there he's looking here and there he's saying uh, the, you know Jesus said through the preacher rise up and walk 
is the counselor there? Is the helper there? Is the partner there? My partner there, partner in progress, and partner in service, and partner in miracle uh, demonstration that will stretch the hand out. I cannot go to the whole crowd. I cannot go to the one over the radio on the television. I cannot go to the one in their houses, husband and wife. I cannot go everywhere and give the hand. It's the one nearby that you will have. Your hands are anointed. Yeah. And then uh, as the command goes forth from here, you stretch your hand, hold them, and gently lift them up and power will come into their body. Tonight, 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 over there, power has come. Yeah. Healing has come. Yeah. Deliverance has come. Yeah. It took him by the right hand, lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. Then in verse 8, it says, And he, leaping up, stood and walked. And entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. Anybody there? Yes, walking, yes, leaping, and praising God. Anybody there? Yes, Seeing and moving yes, and praising God. Yes, Those blind eyes will open. Yes, Anybody there, the load that the devil packs in your body, in your belly, and ear, fibroid, cancer, swelling. As I mentioned the name of Jesus, if there's no hand that can touch you, your husband is not there. You touch yourself, and as we open our eyes, final amen, lo and behold, she's free. And walking and praising God. Any demonic oppression in the brain, the hand is laid on the head. And I mention the name, I say, in the name of Jesus, demon, pack your load and go. And immediately, as we say the final, amen, he's free. He looks around, he gets up, he walks here, he walks there. He said, do you know what I was before? I am now free and I'm walking and praising God. Sickness will go today. That infirmity will go today. And then he tells us in verse 9. In verse 9 it says, and all the people saw him Walking and praising God. And all the people see you walking and praising God. And all the people, they recognize you. They said, he was blind. She was blind. And now they can see you. You see and you are walking and you are praising God. Everything that I've been reaching concerning his sick diagnosis is done. Diagnosis, blood flowing. Diagnosis, pile. Diagnosis, HIV. Diagnosis, helpless, hopeless. Diagnosis, incurable. Tonight, at the mention of the name of Jesus, all those diagnoses, everything will be wiped away. And you will stand up walking and praising God. And you say, you've got the miracle. Where is the person? You've got the miracle? I said, where is the person? Come out here and come to this side and come and give testimony. And I see you coming. And I see you lining up. And I'm going to wait and look at the faces of the people coming. I say, why are you smiling? Why are you laughing? Why are you rejoicing? He said, preacher, I got it. That sickness is now under my feet. Yeah. Praise the Lord, tonight you have a testimony. Yeah. I come to number three here. Number three is the promise of total solution 
in his name. The promise of total solution in his name. Solution has come for you. John chapter 15 verse 16. John 15 16. Ye have not chosen me but I have chosen you. Wonderful. God has chosen you. Christ has chosen you. So you will not uh, go away from the queue as Christ is coming. He wants to touch you. I have chosen you. I've got miracles from heaven. Salvation from heaven. Deliverance from heaven. I have chosen you. Maybe you are sitting down. Maybe you are standing up and you are wondering, should I? Should I? Not you say, yes, you should because I have chosen you and ordained you. I put you in place. He brought you here tonight to pass a miracle from heaven into your life. And then it says that he should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit shall remain and that whatsoever that's why he chose you that's why his son is upon you that whatsoever ye shall ask the father in my name whatsoever ye shall ask the father in my name that's I have a problem. I want solution. It's done. Yeah. I have something I don't understand moving about in my body. I want it to move. It's giving me discomfort. It's done. I have this challenge in my family, my wife, my husband, my child, my daughter, my son, and it's bringing sorrow in my heart. It's done. That whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he'll give it you. He'll give it you. In Philippians chapter 2, reading from verse 9. Philippians chapter 2, looking at verse 9. Wherefore God has also highly exalted him. And giving him a name above every name. The name above the name of your sickness, of your problem, of your disease. God has given him a name above every name. In verse 10, it says that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And then in verse 11, it says, And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Your tongue will confess tonight that Jesus is Lord over your soul. Jesus is Lord. For your salvation, Jesus is Lord. Against every sickness, disease in your body, Jesus is Lord. Against every problem, every challenge you have, Jesus is Lord. In your life tonight, he is Lord. What are you? In your life tonight, he is Lord. And he came so that you will know that that name has been given to him. And that name will do what no other power can do in the world. That name will bring transforming salvation unto you. That name will bring the trampling of sickness under your feet. And that name will bring total solution in your life in Jesus' name. Everyone there, everyone here, everyone over there, solution has now come for you. It's bowed and eyes closed. Tonight will not pass you by. And you will not miss your miracle tonight in Jesus' name. 
It's about a nice closed. Yes, salvation for you. Because the angel said, Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. He wants to save you, forgive you, set you free, and give you the power, the grace to go and live a transformed life, transforming salvation. You are there, you want that salvation that brings excitement and joy and victory over our lives, in our lives. You are there, you want that salvation now. He will forgive your sin and set you free. What Wherever you are, just raise up your hand. That salvation is yours tonight. That salvation is yours tonight. It will transform your life. Don't worry. I, I cannot live right. I cannot do this. I cannot leave the drunkenness. I cannot leave the disobedience. I cannot leave the defiance. I cannot leave all the things that, you know, demon, the demons have put upon my life. Don't worry. He is the one that will save you. He is here today as a savior. Wherever you are, raise up your hand and say, Lord, I want your salvation. If you are raising up your hand, God bless you there, stand up, stand up, stand up, and say, yes, I want that, trans that transforming salvation, that salvation that will change my life and turn my life around and bring righteousness instead of unrighteousness and bring grace instead of guilt. Tell the Lord as you are standing up, oh Lord, I believe, I believe because if thou shalt believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is now your Lord, thou shalt be saved. Raise up that hand and stand up, stand up, stand up there. Stand up, stand up for Jesus. He brings salvation to you right now. Anyway, you are online. There is the moment of you having a transforming salvation. Anyway, you are over the radio there, on the television there. Just stand up and raise up your hand. I can see you there. And you have that transforming salvation. I'm praying with you now. Are you ready for the prayer? I said, are you ready for the prayer? Father, in Jesus' name. We thank you for the purpose why Christ came. Is to take away the power of sin. And break that yoke of sin in our lives. And wash everything away. And blot everything out. And take the effect and the power of the sins away from our lives. Lord, that's why you came. And these have indicated that they want your transforming salvation. Give it to them right now. Forgive all their sins in Jesus' name. Set them free. From that bondage of sin in Jesus' name. Help every one of them to now have the grace for a new life. We pray that the Spirit of God will bear witness according to the word of God that they have turned away from sin. They have called upon the name of the Lord and the word of God is fulfilled in their lives. They are saved. I am saved. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. I am saved. That name, because of who he means, is Christ our Savior. He has saved you. Lord, confirm it in every heart from heaven in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know it is done. In Jesus' name. We pray. Keep on standing. Our counselors are there and uh, they'll give you a little sleep and you feel we're rejoicing with you that we'll say we'll call on our pastor to help us tonight and after that we'll come to trample sickness under our feet. Amen. You are saved, you are delivered, 
You are an important person here, a very, very important person. So please keep standing up until the counselors come around you, give you a sleep, as you have been instructed, feel, and you will be properly recorded, and your name and your presence also will be recorded by the grace of God. Please be patient as you stand up and as you receive the counselors near you. Those who are online and you have given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, please look at the link on your screen. Click on that link. Fill the form so that we can assist you further in your, in your Christian journey. If you are listening through radio or television and you have given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, you are very, very important. Please send your name, phone number, your location, address, via SMS or WhatsApp to plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three. I I repeat the number again. Plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three. Do that now and be happy you are part of the people of the kingdom. Wherever you are, please fill the form. All the people who are outside the Alpha location, please, as the people at the Alpha location are responding, filling the form and making themselves available, please make yourself available and fill the form or get yourself properly recorded down. Please, the counselors, let's make sure wherever the people are, we reach them there. Don't sit down until you have been recognized by the counselors and your name is properly documented. And it's better that you fill the form in capital letters so that we can see clearly. There will be a special meeting tomorrow, lunch hour with Jesus. For all those who gave their life to Jesus from the beginning of the program up to today, please be there tomorrow by 3 p.m. at this crusade ground at the big tent at the back of the congregation. Please be there tomorrow behind the congregation. That's where the big tent is. There will also be Converse Rally and special banquet for all, all. Those watching online who gave their lives to Christ on Sunday 9th, October 2022. So please, more details will be given unto you after now. Our pastor will be delighted that you join this special banquet. Special banquet. Mena Believers Banquet on Sunday night, October 2022 at Deeper Life Bible Church Headquarters, Shiroro, Bracken Sally, 
by 4 p.m. The counselors, if you have completed the registration of all the converts where you are, just raise your flag so that you will know you are okay in that area. While we are waiting, the man of God has said there will be showers of miracles tonight. So begin to pray that when the man of God will come and pray, the showers of miracle will be your portion tonight. You will be partakers of this blessing. You will receive great miracles. We are still waiting for the brethren who are having the flag in their hand to show that they have completed in their area so that we are sure that all who have given their lives to the Lord, they are properly documented. Heaven is interested that you are recognized. There's joy in heaven over you as you have given your life to the Lord. So let the brethren know you. Let them enter your name. So that the, uh, the convener of this program can help you more after now this is the link we have with you after now please put your name down make sure your name is properly documented and we are sure you will give the correct name the correct phone number the correct address and the name you are known where you are living or the school where you are, please let all this be properly documented. Still waiting for our brethren to let us know if they are finished wherever they are. So that the man of God can come and pray for showers of miracles tonight. On my extreme left, at the center here, On my stream right, thank you. I can see, okay. Thank you very much. I've seen on stream right, I've seen at the center. I'm yet to see the flag on my stream left. Let's make sure all the converts are well documented, their names.
those on my extreme left. Let's quickly do it. And let's know you have completed the registration. Thank you. On my stream left, I've seen your flag. God bless you. The man of God will be coming now to shower miracles into your life. Let's rise up on our feet as we receive him. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Remember that the God of all possibilities, he does wonders without number. Great things, mighty things, solution to every problem. And every sickness coming under your feet, even at this time, in Jesus' name. And whosoever, whosoever, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be healed, Amen. shall be delivered, Amen. shall be set free. Amen. Who is that person? All he needs is that you raise up your hand and you believe. And with the heart you believe. With the mouth you make your confession that every sickness, every infirmity is now under your feet and tonight it shall come to pass. Yeah. For the blind eyes to open, it shall come to pass. For the lame to rise up and walk, it shall come to pass. And for that incurable disease to vanish out of your life, it shall come to pass. And for you to stand and walk, praising God, it shall come to pass. Where is he? Where is she there? When you hear the final amen, that miracle has come from heaven. You raise up your hand for your healing, for your deliverance, for your freedom, for your miracle. And for that demonic power, that demon to get out of your mind, out of your brain, and come under your feet. Raise up one hand and lay the other hand where you have the challenge. Don't be an onlooker. Don't be a spectator. Let your miracle reach you there where you are. And tonight, the Lord will put testimony in your mouth. Yeah. Heaven is ready for you now. Raise up that hand. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. Well, thank you because why God that cannot fail. Your promises cannot fail. Your power cannot fail. And your performance in every life cannot fail in Jesus' name. We come in the name, in the name that conquers every problem. In the name that heals every sickness. In the name that drives out every demonic manifestation and affliction. And I command that evil spirit, that evil power, that demonic personality there, come out in Jesus' name. And I pray that that insanity, I pray that that madness will come out of your life, of your hell, of your body, of your mind, in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that every stubborn sickness, 
every stubborn disease, every incurable disease that had been there all these many years. They have prayed, they have fasted, they have cried, they have rolled on the ground, they have done everything, gone up, gone down, and gone to and fro, and yet no solution. Lord, I decree tonight is the night of solution. Lord, you said, if I say it, that it will be done. I say it, re receive your miracle in Jesus' name. Every power of that sickness, of that disease, of that incurable infirmity in your body, I clear everything out of your life now in Jesus' name. Healing for you. Deliverance for you. Dominion for you. The power of the Lord comes upon your life now. And whatever, whatever, whatsoever you are asking now, receive in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that now every sickness, whatever the name, every disease, whatever the name, will get out of that body. Amen. Come under your feet. Amen. And you trample over every sickness and every disease in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, manifest your power. Amen. Manifest the performance. Manifest the miracle distribution everywhere in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It is done. In Jesus' name, I pray. Check up yourself now. The Lord has done it. This is not the time to start crying all over. This is not the time to be weeping now. This is the time. If anyone is lame there, counselors, ushers, give them a helping, a gentle helping hand. They will walk. If anyone is blind there, check up on them, they will see. Any deaf and dumb there, the mighty power of God has been manifested. They can now hear, they can now speak. And whatever you were not able to do before, any pain there, anything you've taken here and there, and those things were still there, now they are gone. I am healed. I am healed. You have a testimony. Amen. Amen. You have a testimony.